Hi there, my name is Diego Fernandez Sevilla. Since 2013, I have been writing analysis over environmental synergies and uh, implications over the developments we address and we observe in the climate of our planet. I have done the most of my work by writing pieces of analytical relevance and publishing them in my blog at diegofernandezsevilla.wordpress.com and also at ResearchGate, sharing each one of those analyses at LinkedIn in my profile to open a discussion and a process of uh, public uh, validation. Today I'm, I want to try something new and something different, which is to use my, the sound of my own voice to just go through one of my latest uh, analysis so other people can not just read what I'm writing but also hear in my voice the words that I'm trying to put in my analysis so I'm just gonna try to read through my latest publication which is from the 23rd of March 2021 with the title Atmospheric Dynamics and Research on Climate Riley Taylor Instabilities in Atmospheric Circulation by Diego Fernandez Sevilla, PhD. My <clears throat> education as a biologist with a master's degree in environmental biology was previous to my PhD in atmospheric biology and the combination of uh, both periods of time studying all the different components of the environment is what has led me to where I am now and to, de and to develop this work that you can study, you can uh, just read through and judge and you will find in my blog or in the publications shared and registered at the research gate in my profile. <coughs> so my analysis starts with the following introduction. Since 2013 I have offered analysis that aim to identify environmental scenarios, including shifts in atmospheric circulation, weather patterns, and their implication over climatic developments. In this line of research, it has been proposed a description of the current developments for local and global dynamics. Such a description offers an explanation for the development of warm and cold anomalies as Riley Taylor instabilities induced by an increase in atmospheric energy load at mid latitudes, an increase in energy carried by water vapor forcing intrusions over the poles, promoting an increase in global mixing, resulting in a wobbly polar jet stream. <coughs> then here I point out some previous analyses. Analysis. Among them, from February 10, 2015, the one with the title Revisiting the Theory of Facing a Decrease in the Differential Gradients of Energy in Atmospheric Circulation. This actually was the first the result of the first public call for validation that I did after I published in 2014 my proposal, my theoretical proposal to explain what we could observe already in 2014 from the records shown in temperature variations in anomalies 
and even from the images obtained from satellites. So this is one of the most important pieces of uh, publication that I did in 2015 already expressing what was and what it still is my overall assessment over what is happening in the atmospheric circulation and the implications for the climate debate. Also in March 7, 2015, I published an analysis called Drops of Weather and I chosen to write this title because the shape of the cold masses of air moving from the poles into mid-latitudes end up, end up with a form of a teardrop that suddenly gets isolated, surrounded by a warmer air and it triggers very strong convection with heavy rain, lightning and very disturbing uh, scenarios in the places where these drops create the weather within. In September 8, 2015, I published also what it represents a visual uh, a visual pattern in the atmospheric circulation at global scale that points out specifically what we can observe in the Arctic Pole as the result of convection from mid-latitudes pushing from both oceanic bases, basins to the point of creating a transarctic circulation between Pacific and Atlantic basins. That means creating variations in, temp in temperature and also affecting the ice cover in this area. Because all of these processes are driven by the carrier in the atmosphere, which is water vapor for the energy fueling all of this convection and advection and because it happens in its majority from both oceanic basins I titled this analysis a climate between waters since this new pattern in atmospheric circulation is triggered by bodies of water from bodies of water in liquid, in liquid form and in gaseous form. In September 14, 2016, I published an analysis entitled Between Global Cooling and Global Warming, There is Global Mixing. That was my way of trying to get to the point, to get to a point, to get to my point, because that's what it's really happening. Some people doesn't see that wo global warming is the answer when the cold weather comes and sets in. But then we have warm and heat waves. And the other side of the debate is where we can find the voices claiming that global warming is the answer. So in between those defending that what we will see is a global war cooling process and those defending that what's happening is a global warming process, I state that we are living actually a global mixing process because temperature only represents what is the amount of energy getting infused into all the dynamics we can observe and witness in the atmosphere. <clears throat> in March 2019 I wrote 
and other analysis already tackling the question again of how we can observe this pattern in the atmosphere with the title a pattern of change in the atmosphere beyond considering global warming or cooling that is global mixing in this analysis i took again a review over the whole past and previous analysis putting against current developments in 2019 the validity and accuracy of my previous conclusions in may 16 2019 i wrote an analysis using specifically the terms of Riley Taylor instabilities to call out the tension of those who think or might wonder if my analysis were accurate enough from the point of view of those applying physics to address the issue. So I just used this analysis in 2018 to actually recall the tension over everything I published previously since 2013 this time using terms applied in physics not because I was describing something new but because maybe some people would find a deeper meaning in my analysis if I use the words they would feel like more appropriate so <clears throat> i'll keep reading what has been published in this current analysis where i state that the actual perturbation in the distribution of temperatures around the world shares a configuration which has been addressed in my line of research on climate it is because of that such configuration has persisted throughout the years independently from a change in solar activity in the Enzo Sino from the equatorial Pacific or even despite changes in ice cover that I keep seeing the same indicators dictating the behavior of the atmosphere which is the energy contained in the atmosphere thanks to greenhouse gases which are not condensable differently from water vapor from the land use transformation throughout the decades which have increased the albedo has they have also reduced the capacity of the soil to retain water and because of the deterioration in the biological cover in the plant cover it has been reduced the capacity of the biotic system to absorb energy which is in free state in the atmosphere from uh, photosynthetic bioprocessing to store it in an inert form which is biomass the current atmospheric conditions show to validate previous analysis and the conclusions exposed some of those conclusions are just five years seven years old and I keep seeing them and the dynamics we observe today March April 2021 one of the discussions in which I address and I actually engaged with other people trying to explain my point of view was the analysis published in December 17, 2016 Orbital Seasonality versus Kinetic Seasonality A change triggered from changing, from changing the order of the factors In this publication you can read how I answer 
the questions from some other scientists, meteorologists, and people interested in the debate about how much can be assessed from the different changes in temperature variations, just applying a different perspective to actually understand that those represent movement, those represent the work fueled by energy in free state. More work means there is more energy fueling those dynamics and that not always can be observed just by looking at variations in temperature. You can observe them also by the movements of mass masses of air going through latitudes and even altitudes triggering processes in the stratosphere as sudden warming processes. In June 29, 2018, I also wrote an analysis explaining how all of these dynamics are affecting the seasons and their transitions. So I titled this analysis Seasonal Transitions Under a New Climatic Scenario. In December 12, 2018, I addressed the dynamics as the result of energy fueling work and I titled my analysis as persistent mixing dynamics in atmospheric circulation generates a seasonal transition marked by kinetic processes exothermic in nature and I mean and I mean exothermic because they are consuming energy In January 13, 2019, I used all my experience and the conclusions from previous analysis to write a forecast in a way by trying to describe how the transition from October or from uh, autumn to winter 2018-2019 were actually showing to validate previous conclusions. So the title for this analysis from January 2018 was Winter Seasonal Transitions Under a New Climatic Scenario. In March 2019, I also wrote again an analysis trying to show, uh, showcase the global mixing patterns we are witnessing. And I title the analysis as a pattern of change in the atmosphere beyond considering global warming or cooling, that is, global mixing. Overall, the conclusions reached in the line of research carried out since 2013 can be summarized as follows based on more than 200 analysis, the data exposed and the discussions carried out, the conclusions reached support the idea that instead of a process of global warming or cooling, there is an invigorated process of global mixing. The energy behind this increase in work is being carried and spread by water vapor throughout the atmosphere thanks to its enhanced thermal capacity promoted by an increasing concentration of non-condensable greenhouse gases like CO2 in conjunction or in addiction with an increase in albedo due to land cover and use, the compaction, compaction of soils, compartmentalization of water flows, and most of all, a reduction in the capacity for the biotic system to absorb perturbations, something which I already addressed before. I keep uh, reading. Furthermore, our societies have become so used to handle of solutions in all products to the extent of living in complete oblivion 
from a reality where the amount of the resources consumed grow proportionally, exponentially, with the waste and pollution generated, speeding up the process of transformation in the composition, structure, and concentration of the components part of the thermo thermodynamic ecosystem, which is built upon the synergistic interactions between soils, gases, and water. Major differences with mainstream research are addressed throughout the study presented, defending that the ENSO is not a driver of atmospheric dynamics, but instead is driven by those that the polar vortex configuration is not the cause for atmospheric dynamics, but the result of those, that sea surface temperatures are the consequence of atmospheric dynamics and not the trigger, and ultimately, and more importantly, that the biotic component in the planet is the only responsible for taming our climate, avoiding a complete release of energetic discharges accumulated from internal and external sources, planetary sources, including sun's, sun's expo solar exposition. All of these assessments have been discussed in previous discussions. From October 2015, in an analysis titled Sea surface temperature anomalies and heat waves, are they not all just heat displacements? We are talking about anomalies of temperature in the 5 centimeters of the surface of the oceans to define sea surface temperature anomalies. And then we are using the surface temperature at 2 meters to define heat waves. In both cases, we are talking about the same body which is exchanging energy that we measure as temperature. In one case, it's interacting with the surface of the oceans, and in the other, we are talking about temperature which is interfering with the surface of the continents. In both cases, are heat displacements carried or triggered by movements of masses of air. So there's something behind the work that fuels these movements that is really the key to understand the whole process. Again, in December 11, 2015, I discussed how sea surface temperatures can actually be the result of and not the trigger of. And I published an analysis entitled, Could it be El Nino, the new wolf coming? In March 22, 2016, again, I addressed the same issue, Pacific atmospheric dynamics with and without a positive ENSO. And in October 18, 2018, I published an article addressing specifically the implications of seeing changes in atmospheric circulation in the Arctic as a piece in a wider Pattern. And I entitled the, uh, this analysis as Arctic Dynamics as part of a global patter, pattern in atmospheric circulation. From 2014 into March 2021, as a whole, the research here presented points to a new scenario in atmospheric dynamics in which the Arctic circulation, previously isolated from subtropical influence, by the polar jet stream has become open to be involved in the atmospheric dynamics for the Pacific and Atlantic basins. 
By comparing previous analysis with current conditions, it could be assessed that present configuration of the atmospheric conditions in the wide spectrum seems to corroborate a pattern involved in the genesis and performance of temperature anomalies around the world. The wider picture even extends previous analyses that have published over Europe indicating an increasing strength in frequency for a pattern dominated by warm intrusions over the Arctic, which displace cold masses of air into lower latitudes, generating strong storms with cold local and sudden changes in atmospheric conditions at the same time that the Arctic sees its temperature rising at tropospheric level, splitting the cold outer circulation in two between Atlantic and Pacific basins and triggering a following process of stratospheric warming. And as, pre as predicted in previous analysis, this new interconnection affects the atmospheric dynamics around the whole North Hemisphere, but also by being our atmosphere a closed system such alteration would affect dynamics at the equator and due to symmetric compensation between hemispheres into the south hemisphere. Those claims are also part of previous discussions and analysis which can be found at the homepage of the blog diegofernandezsevilla.wordpress.com at the bottom of the page where you can find the index with all the publications and the links to each one of them links which are pointing to the publication of the blog and also at the registered PDF at ResearchGate so you can actually see that those analyses were registered in a point in time and their value against recent developments are holding under your judgment which I offer for you to use as a whole, in the framework presented throughout the line of research that I have published since 2013, it has been considered climate has been defined by the amount of energy in free state to do work. In other words, energy free to promote weather events. Accordingly, in my research, I define climate by the amount and state of energy in circulation and whether by the use of this energy. This is a completely new approach which I actually think it suits better all the analysis we can make to address the changes we can observe. Not only in the variables we measure but also in the shapes of the clouds that we observe from the ground and from the satellites. Current, consequently, with my definition applied for climate and weather, my definition for what could be called a climate drift or a climate change is that the deviation is that this change or drift is the deviation from equilibrium of the conditions allowing the perpet perpetuity of an established symbiotic relationship between biotic and non-biotic components in a micro and micro in a micro and macro ecosystem. This situation can be due to changes in changes in any component of the ecosystem playing a synergistic effect over the rest, and the cause can be either a change in the magnitude of the already implemented forces in place changes in the directionality or rates in the flows of energy pre-established or M, the impact suffered by the incorporation of new components and energy sinks or 
sources in any part of the system interfering with the previously established order and balance. In other words, if we consider climate the result of, a, of an equilibrium between energy flows established between biotic, biotic and non-biotic components in our planet, by interfering with any of those components, in this case by interfering with the biotic component, or by interfering with the composition of the medium used for the flow of energy between those components, which is the atmosphere, we are actually interfering with the resulting climate. And that's my whole point. I'm going to leave it here because that's 30 minutes of me talking. This analysis actually keeps going, trying to cover a more extended discussion, pointing to the analysis in which I address all of these transformations in the different components of the environment which are part of the synergistic uh, network that builds the therm thermodynamic climate in which we are living. I'm addressing changes and transformation for the soils, for the biotic system, for the water bodies. I am addressing in, throughout all my analysis the wrong application of Stefan Bothman theories to address the meaning of temperature changes throughout the globe. I also talk about how we can observe actually the power of the biotic component over the land cover as we can see over the Amazons and how this cover interferes with the circulation in the atmosphere and by observing such power we can also understand which are the repercussions from removing all of this biotic power from the land cover around the globe. I can even offer data about how much transformation have we observed throughout the, throughout the latest decades about land use and land cover. And finally, I actually use some some outside note or I add an extra point of view addressing how human activities interfere with the energy flows in our planetary thermodynamic system we call climate by addressing the amount of energy that we in our industries in our actions by removing the biotic land cover by what we call consume, con, consumption of energy and production of energy. How all of these terms are actually part of the interactions that might affect our climate. First, because humans harvest an amount of energy exceeding all needs for survival, defense of their integrity, or even growth. Because while half population is hungry, the other half is consuming one third of what it is produced. So there is a lot of 
wasted energy that it goes into the environment. Secondly, the exaggerated amount of energy harvested competes directly with the energy required by all the other organisms, organisms of the planet. Third, the process of harvesting energy by human activities, when it's not directly competing with the rest of ecosystems, still affect their energy supply by polluting the sources of the energy they use altogether with the water bodies, soils, air or space. So opposite to biological processes that store the energy they harvest in the biological structures they build, humans harvest energy which is not stored in neither the structures they build. Meanwhile, trees in a forest store energy in their mass, buildings and cities are made out of inner materials which only reflect the energy around. Our ecosystem is facing the challenge of coping with a second source incorporating energy into the system coming from human activity. And in comparison with previous periods of time, thanks to our domesticating system, domesticated system, our environment is not fully developed or strong enough to confront the challenge of having even more pressures derived derived from external sources of energy coming into place, like an increase in solar activity or volcanic eruptions. All processes in which humans are involved start by transforming the environment in which the energy has harvested, breaking the local capacity to store energy, from mining, construction, deforestation, or farming, where the soils and the plants grow grown become isolated from each other. So the conclusions that I have defended throughout my whole body of work can be some addressed in lines which are the follows. The ENSO is not a driver convective forcing over the North Hemisphere but the result of it. Convective, convective forcing from mid-latitudes towards the Arctic circulation has worked off the gradients of a temperature generating a strong polar jet stream. In other words, without a strong gradient of, energy, of a temperature, there is no polar jet stream. It weakens. Arctic warming occurs through atmospheric intrusions from mid-latitudes. The collapse of the polar jet stream has opened Arctic circulation to mid latitudinal circulation intrusions, allowing a transarctic circulation between Pacific and Atlantic basins. The global temperature measure is the resultant of mixing patterns in the atmosphere. Therefore, an increasing mixing dynamics creates a pause in temperature rise, as we are witnessing this trend. 2021. An increase in mixing dynamics show an increase in convective, convec convective forcing. Convective forcing is the work resultant from an increase in atmospheric energy being incorporated in free state. Incorporation and the spread of energy in free state into the atmosphere is carried and released by water vapor. An increase of water vapor in atmospheric circulation requires an increase in the thermal capacity of the atmosphere. The process of enhancing the thermal capacity of the atmosphere comes by increasing the concentration of greenhouse gases, concentration of aerosols and land surface albedo. Several processes carried out by human activities are linked with the previous assessment. Human activity reduces the capacity of the biotic environment to fix energy from free state into inert state by reducing biochemical processing and storage. And increases atmospheric concentration of greenhouse gases by releasing CO2 and water into the atmosphere. 
Also, land use and cover transformations increase albedo, industrial activities increase aerosols, and the compartmentalization of water affects water cycles. The thermodynamic system in the, the, therm the thermodynamic system In a thermodynamic system, the energetic pool is the sum of the amount of energy in free state capable of doing work and the energy fixed in an inert form as part of mass. The amount of energy in free state is proportional to the amount of energy fixed in inert form as mass. That's what Einstein actually wrote in a very easy equation energy equals the proportion of mass with a kinetic energy represented by the velocity of light the release of energy from its inner form increases the amount of energy in free state to the work energy is not created neither destroyed so the transformation of the three phases of the environment forced by human activities, the changes in the gaseous state, atmosphere, the liquid bodies involved in water cycles, and the solid component by land use and cover, increases the amount of energy in free state capable of promoting all forms of work. Convective forcing, strong winds, solid and liquid precipitation, lightning, dust storms, heat waves, cold displacements, and yield ultimate, ultimately an increase in atmospheric mixing in altitude and across latitudes. Throughout the winter 2021, cold and warm dynamics of atropospheric and stratospheric levels have happened simultaneously. And if there is a progression, if there is a progression coming from past years in the atmospheric circulation we are witnessing, it comes by seeing through the seasons warm temperatures moving north, follow it, followed by a stratospheric warming process which promotes a weak polar vortex circulation. Despite all the theories avail available, my interpretation is simple about what is happening. Between global warming and global cooling, we are living a process of global mixing, promoted by an increase in the atmospheric energy pool. Using water vapor as the carrier of such energetic extra, thanks to an enhanced thermal capacity generated from increasing greenhouse gases, albedo, and aerosols. The origin of this imbalance in the energetic pool driving the thermodynamic system can be associated with changes in the composition, structure, location and concentration of the components integrating the planetary system. So human activities can be associated with all those changes. Well, 